A hot air balloon is rising straight up from a level field and is being tracked by a rangefinder that's located 500 feet from the liftoff point. All right, so here we've got the ground and our hot air balloon is rising straight up. So here's my balloon, lovely balloon. <laughs> And it says it's being tracked by a rangefinder that's located 500 feet from the liftoff point. So this horizontal distance, here's my, my little rangefinder, is 500 feet. And that distance is not changing. The rangefinder is not moving. So that's a constant in this problem. At the moment, the rangefinder's angle of elevation is pi fourths. The angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. So the question is, how fast is the balloon rising at that moment? All right, so if we were to take a look at the angle of elevation, remembering from trigonometry that the angle of elevation is always measured from the horizontal up, so that would be from the ground up. So if we were to look, try again, sorry about that. If we were to look at uh, basically the line of sight from the, the range finder up to the balloon, then my angle of elevation would be right here. So as the balloon is rising, let's talk about what's changing. So we have several different changing quantities. Uh, clearly the distance from the balloon to the ground, that's going to be a changing value. So there's one quantity that's changing. I can call that x or any variable that you want. And then the angle is also changing, uh, the angle of elevation is changing. So I'll give that a, a variable name. I'm going to call that theta. That angle is changing. Now, incidentally, this, this uh, hypotenuse length, that would also be changing. But if we continue reading, you'll notice we're not going to be given any information about that length. So it turns out that's not going to be a length that we really have to worry about in the problem. If you had labeled it as a variable, that would be OK. You would just find out later on that it was not needed. All right, so reading again, we know that the range finder is 500 feet from the liftoff point. We've already identified that as a constant value that's not changing. And it says at the moment that the range finder's angle elevation is pi fourths. So the angle of elevation is not always pi fourths, but rather that's going to be just at one specific instant. So that pi fourths, that's going to be part of our, our fine statement. When we write find blank when blank, essentially, we could say, okay, we're looking for at the moment that theta, our angle, at the moment theta is pi fourths, we're going to be looking for how fast the balloon is rising at that moment. So how fast the balloon is rising, that would be how fast x is changing, the distance between the balloon and the ground. So that's going to be the second part of the fine statement. We're really looking for dx dt, the rate at which x is changing when theta is pi fourths. Now we also have some additional numerical information that we haven't identified yet. And it said at the moment that the angle of elevation is pi fourths, the angle is increasing at a rate of 0.14 radians per minute. So that's telling me the rate at which theta is changing. So we could label that as d theta dt. The rate at which theta is changing is 0.14 radians per minute. So that's a rate of change. So the difficult part is over. We've got our diagram that's labeled. We've identified what's constant and what's changing. And we have our fine statement we know what we're looking to find. So now we just need a relationship between the variables and the problem. And a lot of times you see a right triangle like this and you'll immediately think, oh, I, I, maybe I should use the Pythagorean theorem. But once again, this length of the hypotenuse is an unknown and we don't have any information about it. When actually we're interested in uh, looking at the angle, we know how fast the angle is changing. So rather than this being a Pythagorean theorem problem, this is actually going to be a trigonometry problem. We're looking at the relationship between theta, the side that is opposite of angle theta, and then this side here that is adjacent to angle theta. So thinking back to right triangle trig or to SOHCAHTOA, we know that we have a trig ratio that will use the opposite and adjacent sides of a triangle, and that would be tangent. So our relationship 
is going to be tangent of angle theta is equal to x divided by 500. And so now we're going to take the derivative of, of both sides with respect to time. So we're going to take the derivative of tangent theta with respect to t, as well as the derivative of x divided by 500. So remember we're using implicit differentiation here. So the derivative of tangent theta is going to be secant squared theta times d theta dt, utilizing our chain rule there. Now the right-hand side, remember, x divided by 500 is the same as 1 over 500 times x. So you can think of this as x to the first power, and the 1 over 500 is just your coefficient, or it's a constant multiple. So the derivative of 1 over 500 times x is just going to be 1 divided by 500 times dx dt. Now, um, this is an interesting problem because if you had chosen instead of instead of taking the derivative right away, let me just mention here at this step, before we took the derivative, if you wanted to multiply both sides of this equation by 500 so that you would have the 500 on the left-hand side with the tangent, that would be fine as well. It's not going to make a bit of difference. And so now we're going to substitute the values that were given to us in the problem. We were looking for uh, at the instant that the angle of elevation was pi fourths, so that would be theta was pi fourths, so we'll have the secant squared of pi fourths, times d theta dt, which was 0.14. That was how fast uh, the, the angle of elevation was changing. And that'll be equal to 1 over 500 times dx dt, which is the unknown that we are solving for. So we can multiply both sides by 500. So the com computation that we have to do, we all have to take secant squared of pi fourths times 0.14 times 500. All right, so let's, let's go back over the, uh, the trig that you might need to review here if you're wanting to take care of this without your calculator. Okay, remember pi fourths is 45 degrees. And I'll kind of do this off to the side here. And we know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So you may want to review back and go, okay, uh, what's the cosine of 45 degrees? So cosine of 45 degrees is going to be rad 2 over 2. So therefore, if we're going to square that, um, cosine squared, no need to even actually write it like that. Okay, cosine squared, we would take rad 2 over 2, and we're going to square that, which will give us 2 divided by 4, or in other words, that will give us 1 half. So now if we come to our problem, and we want secant squared, that's going to be the reciprocal. So instead of 1 half, we're going to have 2. So this becomes 2 times 0.14 times 500. And this gives us 140. So now all we need are some units. So going back to our diagram and noticing x, x was a distance. It was the distance between the balloon and the ground. And we were measuring that distance in feet. We can see here because we had our horizontal distance measured in feet. So we know that x was being measured in feet and time Time was being measured in minutes. So this would be 140 feet per minute. So at the moment that the range finder's angle of elevation is pi fourths, we know that the balloon is rising at a rate of 140 feet per minute. And notice we got a positive rate here, rate of change, and that makes sense because the distance between the balloon and the ground is increasing.